In 1927, at the fifth Solvay conference, the titans of physics gathered, but the universe they were describing was already pulling apart at the seams. Classical intuition, the bedrock of centuries of science, was about to be shattered by a single, impossibly simple experiment. Imagine a particle, a lone electron, fired from a source towards a barrier with two thin parallel slits. On the other side, a detector screen waits to record where it lands. Newtonian physics, the physics of our everyday world, makes a clear and unambiguous prediction. The electron, being a solid bit of matter, must pass through either the left slit or the right slit. Over time, as we fire thousands of electrons, we should see two distinct bands on the screen, a direct stencil of the slits themselves. It's simple, it's logical, and it is completely, utterly wrong. What the experiments, first confirmed by Davison and Germer in the same year, actually showed was a pattern of many bands, a series of bright and dark fringes. This is an interference pattern, the unmistakable signature of a wave, where crests from one path amplify crests from another and crests meet troughs to cancel each other out. A single, indivisible particle was somehow behaving like a wave, passing through both slits simultaneously and interfering with itself. The universe, at its most fundamental level, was not playing by the rules. This bizarre duality is the ghost in the machine of reality, the foundational paradox of quantum mechanics. The electron, when we are not looking, is not a particle. It is a cloud of potential, a wave of probability described by a mathematical entity known as the wave function. This state is called superposition. The electron simultaneously possesses the potential to be anywhere its wave function is non-zero. It isn't in one place or another. It is, in a very real sense, in all possible places at once. It flows through the left slit, the right slit, and every conceivable path in between. It is a smear of existence, a whisper of what could be. This is the world as described by Erwin Schrödinger's famous equation, a world of pure, unblemished potential. It's the origin of his unsettling thought experiment, a cat in a box with a radioactive atom that has a 50% chance of decaying and triggering a poison vial. Until the box is opened, the atom is in a superposition of both decayed and not decayed states. Therefore, the cat, its fate entangled with the atom, is simultaneously both dead and alive. It's a grotesque but mathematically sound extension of the quantum reality that governs the subatomic world. The universe, left to its own devices, exists in this ghostly, probabilistic state. But then, we decide to look. Here, the paradox deepens into a profound mystery. Physicists, unsatisfied with this ambiguity, modified the double-slit experiment. They placed a detector by the slits, a tiny, sophisticated device capable of registering which path the electron actually takes. The goal was simple, to catch the particle in the act, to force it to reveal its secret. The moment the detector is turned on, the moment we gain information about the electron's path, everything changes. The interference pattern vanishes instantly. In its place, two distinct bands appear on the screen exactly as classical physics predicted all along. The act of measurement, the simple act of knowing, forces the electron to abandon its wave-like multipath existence. The wave function collapses. The cloud of potential condenses into a single concrete reality. The electron chooses a slit, behaves like a good solid particle, and the quantum weirdness evaporates as if it were never there. This is the observer effect, and it is one of an unsettling phenomena in all of science. It's not a matter of the detector physically bumping the electron and disturbing it. Experiments have become so sophisticated that the interaction is infinitesimally small. It is the extraction of information itself that seems to be the trigger. This discovery is a direct assault on the very concept of an objective reality. For centuries, science operated on the assumption that the universe is out there, a grand clockwork mechanism with definite properties, existing independently of us. A planet has a position, a rock has a mass, whether we measure them or not.
Quantum mechanics argues otherwise. It suggests that at the subatomic level, properties like position or momentum are not well defined until they are measured. The universe isn't a pre-written book we are simply reading. It's a story being written as we turn the pages. The observer is not a passive bystander, but an active participant, fundamentally entangled with the system being observed. But this raises the most profound question of all. What, precisely, constitutes an observer? Does it require a conscious human mind, a scientist in a lab coat? Or is any interaction with a macroscopic device sufficient? The line is unnervingly blurry. It's as if the cosmos holds its breath, its possibilities shimmering in a delicate superposition until any form of interaction, conscious or mechanical, forces it to exhale into a single solidified state. Does this imply our universe is merely a sea of potential until we engage with it? A vast cosmic canvas painted only where our attention or our instruments happen to fall? What then is the true nature of reality when absolutely no one and nothing is watching? From that paradox emerges the deepest schism in modern physics. If observation collapses potential into reality, we are forced to ask, what is the mechanism behind this cosmic decision-making? The first, and for a long time the most dominant, came from the architects of the quantum revolution themselves. The Copenhagen interpretation, championed by Niels Bohr and Werner Heisenberg in the late 1920s, offers a pragmatic, if philosophically unsettling, solution. It posits that the probabilistic nature of the quantum world is not a sign of our ignorance, but a fundamental feature of the universe. The wave function is a complete description of the system. There is no deeper hidden reality to be found. And the collapse is not a physical process in the classical sense, but a transition from the quantum realm of probabilities to the classical realm of definite outcomes. The observer, in this view, is not necessarily a conscious being. It is any macroscopic measuring device. The moment a quantum system like an electron interacts with a large-scale object, a detector, a photographic plate, even a single air molecule, it becomes entangled with it. This process, called quantum decoherence, rapidly spreads the superposition across a vast complex system, effectively destroying the delicate interference pattern and creating the effect of a collapse into a single state. The observer, then, is simply the point where the strange rules of the quantum world give way to the familiar deterministic rules of our classical experience. It's a functional, powerful framework that makes incredibly accurate predictions. But it comes at a steep price. It forces us to accept a universe that is fundamentally indeterminate, a reality that is genuinely fuzzy and undecided until measured. This idea was anathema to some of the greatest minds of the era, most notably Albert Einstein. His discomfort wasn't with the mathematics, but with the philosophical implications. He famously sparred with Bohr, arguing that God does not play dice. Einstein was a staunch believer in realism, the idea that objects have definite properties that exist before we measure them, and locality, the principle that an object is only directly influenced by its immediate surroundings. The Copenhagen interpretation violated both. He believed quantum mechanics was an incomplete theory, a statistical approximation of a deeper deterministic reality governed by hidden variables we had yet to discover. His 1935 paper with Boris Podolsky and Nathan Rosen outlining the EPR paradox was his most potent attack. It described a scenario where two entangled particles could instantaneously influence each other over vast distances, a phenomenon he derisively called spooky action at a distance. For decades, this was a purely philosophical debate. But in the 1960s, physicist John Bell devised a theorem that could experimentally test the question. Bell's theorem and the subsequent experiments, most famously by Alan Aspect in 1982, have overwhelmingly shown that local hidden variables of the kind Einstein envisioned cannot explain the observed correlations. The universe, it seems, really is that spooky.
Einstein's clockwork cosmos, objective and independent, was dealt a severe, perhaps fatal blow. With the door seemingly closed on Einstein's classical dream, other, even more radical ideas began to flourish. In 1957, a young Princeton graduate student named Hugh Everett III, deeply dissatisfied with the special role of the observer and the arbitrary collapse in the Copenhagen view, proposed a breathtaking alternative. What if the wave function never collapses at all? What if possible outcome of a quantum measurement is real? This is the foundation of the many worlds interpretation. In this view, every time a quantum system in superposition interacts with an observer, the entire universe splits. The wave function doesn't collapse into one reality, reality itself cleaves into multiple, parallel branches. In one universe, the electron went through the left slit, and a version of you saw it there. In another, absolutely identical universe, it went through the right slit, and another version of you saw outcome. The cat is not both dead and alive in one world. There is a universe where the cat is definitively dead, and another, equally real universe where it is definitively alive. All possibilities are actualized, each in its own separate, non-communicating cosmos. The observer doesn't create a single reality. The act of observation simply determines which branch of this cosmic multiverse you happen to find yourself on. It's an elegant solution that removes the problematic collapse and restores a deterministic objective reality, or an infinite number of them. It trades one philosophical puzzle for another, the existence of a near infinity of parallel worlds forever beyond our reach, constantly branching with every quantum event. So we stand at a crossroads, staring into the heart of a mystery that defines the fabric of existence. Is reality a single, probabilistic script that solidifies only when we read it, as the Copenhagen interpretation suggests? Or is it an infinitely branching storybook where every possible plot twist plays out in its own parallel volume, as the many worlds theory proposes? Both ideas are born from the same mathematics and explain the same experimental results, yet they paint starkly different pictures of our cosmos. The science doesn't yet tell us which one is correct. What it does tell us, unequivocally, is that the universe is not the simple, inert stage we once imagined. The loneliest law of physics is this. You cannot observe something without changing it. Whether we are collapsing probabilities or splitting realities, our interaction is a fundamental part of the cosmic drama. The physicist John Wheeler called it a participatory universe, one in which the very act of knowing may be an act of creation. The universe, in a way we are only beginning to grasp, seems to be built to be seen.